Hey everyone in the world of cloud computing, here are a few tech news highlights from this week. I'm Brad Nelson of Nelson Hilliard, a cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, fintech and AI. Thank you all for your support on social media and subscribing to our blogs and YouTube videos. We are now on iTunes with all our podcasts of all the shows and news. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook and below are all the links. Watch out for the new weekly cloud computing shows with David Linthicum, who's the world's number one cloud industry expert and internationally recognized thought leader. This week, we're excited to have as our special guest, Yuri Misnik. Yuri is the executive general manager and CIO at the National Australia Bank. And don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and share these videos with your friends and with your colleagues. This week, Rio Tinto is moving its global CIO role to Australia. Rio Tinto moves its global CIO role to Australia after Singapore-based IT chief Simon Beamy leaves. Rio Tinto said in a job advertisement, the CIO's team includes the whole breadth of the function, including information security, digital, core global systems, three functional hubs in Perth, Brisbane and Montreal, infrastructure and portfolio management. This week saw IBM sign a 1 billion Australian dollar contract for the whole Australian government deal. The federal government has locked in a deal touted to be worth up to 1 billion Australian dollars with mega vendor IBM as its efforts to extract better value from major enterprise suppliers grinds on. Michael Keenan, Minister of Human Services and Minister assisting the Prime Minister for Digital Transformation said in an announcement as a major buyer of IBM's products and services, the deal enables us to maximize the return on our ICT investments and ensures that taxpayers are always getting the best possible value for money. Medicare and Centrelink remain two of IBM's biggest transactional shops in government, with business dating back for decades. This week sees Airtasker caught up in a Typeform data breach. The jobs marketplace company Airtasker has revealed that a small amount of data it collected through web forms may have been compromised in the Typeform breach. The Sydney-based company has confirmed that it had received an email from Typeform advising that some of its data may have been a partial backup that attackers exfiltrated from Typeform last weekend. Typeform is a Spanish as a service provider whose software is used to power online web forms, competition application forms and surveys. Some Australian users have temporarily suspended their use of Typeform software while they work to understand the impact of the provider's data breach. This week is the Australian National University network significantly compromised by hackers. The Australian National University or ANU computer network has been compromised with Chinese hackers being blamed for the attack. Fairfax Media reported late last Friday that the university's network had been significantly compromised in the attack, citing unnamed national security officials. An ANU spokesperson said, The university has been working in partnership with the Australian government agencies for several months to minimise the impact of this threat, and we continue to seek and take advice from the Australian government agencies. I'm Brad Nelson. I hope you enjoyed watching this week's news. Remember to like, subscribe, comment and share this video with your friends and with your colleagues. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn and find us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. And you can also check out our latest shows with David Linthicum and Yuri Misnik, the CIO from National Australia Bank. And you can also check out the podcast in the description box below. Until next week, be good, be safe and keep our clouds secure.